out for your mouth. Today we're doing a southern special. How about a little homemade wine? Musky dine. Musky dine wine. Look at this one. Look right there. Wow. Stay tuned. Like I say, we're making some muscadine wine at home. This is an old recipe. Some people actually call this prison wine because I guess this is how they do it in jail too. But <laughs> this is loosely based on a couple of my uncle's recipes that I saw him make when I was a kid. We're gonna see how we do. So what we got here, we got muscadines. You're gonna need some sugar. And the muscadines has already had the stems pulled off and no, just off the stem and washed, right? Right. And I have some jars here. I have half gallon mason jars, okay? Half gallon. What you wanna do with your fruit, you wanna fill that about halfway up to maybe maybe a third to halfway up. You can see what I've got there. Cause every time you put too much in there, it takes up all your liquid space. Then we got some champagne red star yeast. So stay tuned. We have taken a pot here. It's gotta be a pot that's big enough to hold a gallon of water. So it's going to be a gallon of water. I've got the heat on here. We're going to bring this to a bowl or right at it. What's planned here is to pour four to five cups of sugar in there. And we're going to let it kind of sink up and clear out and melt in there. So we'll have sugar water. You can also use that as simple syrup if you get a headache from the simple syrup at the store. All right, we're going to add some sugar now. This water has been heating up. It's pretty much at a boil. I just backed it down a little. It's just very hot. It's gonna be good to melt sugar. That's all you gotta do. <clears throat> Some people like real sweet wine. You can add more, but I'm gonna put five cups in here. Just regular old sugar. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so now we're, we've got the sugar in the hot water. We're still very warm water here. I just wanna stir this until the sugar dissolves. Basically, you're making sugar water here. You're just melting it, right? We're gonna to go to this is pretty much clear. So stay tuned and we'll show you what it looks like. With the All right, so we've been stirring this with the hot, hot water and everything's about clear now. So stay tuned, we're gonna put us in a little pitcher to pour the water with, and then we'll show you how the rest goes. All right, folks, we're back. We got our hot water here, hot sugar water, mason jars. Is this a lot of heat? I'm assuming this can take it. I've done it this way several times, so it should be good. We do have a hot plate just in case. They start to float there. I'm gonna fill it about to the shoulder of the jar right there. The reason you do that is so when you add the yeast, you're just gonna put this on real loose and let it bubble out. If you put this down tight, all this will come up and bust your, bust your jar or compromise your wine. So that's how we're gonna pour the jar right there. going to do too is we're going to let this cool down before we add the yeast because as far as I know it's not a good idea to add yeast to the hot so stay tuned for that too I'm going to show you I think I may have shown you this already but just in case these are mason jars I know if you're making real wine you want to have a bubbler well we didn't buy a bubbler this is kind of a southern version cheap cheap version of it so mason jars when you put this on after the yeast you'll see shortly 
you can leave it real blank like that, or you can tighten it just a little like that. Just wanna let that air escape. Otherwise, that lid loose. otherwise this could blow up or make a mess in your closet. You don't wanna do that. All right, we've cooled down some of the sugar water for the third one here. Just go ahead and pour it in there up to the shoulder. All right, folks, we're gonna add our yeast. These uh, bottles are cooled down now. The water, they're not scorching hot anymore. One of these packs is enough to do five gallons. We're not doing five gallons, but what I normally do is divide this between two or three of these uh, jars. So that's what we're gonna do today. And what is that? Champagne yeast. Let's spread it around in there. We'll just pour it till we get them even. This is the sight method right here. We just sighted it in. <laughs> boss used to say in one of my first jobs that somebody drove by the touch method. I asked him what that meant. He said that they drove until they touched another car. <laughs> so not quite this method, but you can see here how it looks. They'll start acting right away. Show it up here. This process will probably take two to four weeks. We'll try to get some shots in the meantime. We're gonna put this in a dark place, probably a closet, and just leave it alone. Like I said, very important, loose lid, very loose lid. And why is that again? So it doesn't blow up on you and destroy your clothes in your closet. Dark uh, area in your home, somewhere 70 to 80 degrees is great. Trust that, check on it, keep looking at it. As you can see, it's already working its way down in there. But like I said, two to four weeks, just look at it. When your fruit falls, that's an indicator it's done. Or if the yeast just totally stops working, that'll be an indication that it's done as well. So stay tuned, and we'll show you how we come out. <laughs> 